Hello friends, the Bourbon Nerd here. Welcome to lesson eight in my Bourbon School. And today I am going to talk about uh, whether a low barrel entry proof is better than a high barrel entry proof. And to help me through this lesson, I'm sipping on a 10 year mixtures bourbon. This is an amazing product. Um, this is 2021 release. It's probably one of the best that they ever made in the 10 year, if you ask me. So if you can get hold of that, give it a try. Cheers. Oh. And a spectacular nose on top of that. Anyway, so low barrel entry proof. And if you don't know what barrel entry proof is, I'm going to tell you in less than one minute. So don't worry about that. And this is actually one of the favorite topics of mine here, because back in 2019, um, together with uh, Blake Riber from the Bourbon blog, um, I made a sort of like an article on this topic. And to this day, it's one of the most popular articles on this topic. So if you Google barrel entry proof, you will see the article that Blake and I made as one of the first two or three, or maybe even the first uh, uh, result there. So, so pretty interesting. So, so digging right into it. And I'm going to tell you here, there's going to be a little bit of a special message here again. Nerd alert! Yes, nerd alert. Just like uh, lesson three, if you watch that, I'm going to put it out there right now. So I will go into extreme details on this barrel entry proof here. So if you're into nerdy stuff, uh, this will be a good one. And if you are not so much into nerdy stuff, um, I hope you're going to hang in there anyway. So basically. Okay, so what is barrel entry proof? So that is a very, very easy question to answer because it is the proof level of the whiskey that comes out of the distillery process and goes into the barrel. So um, if you look at the screen right now, um, some industry facts here, the typical proof level of whiskey going into the barrel is about 125. And for the remaining of this uh, lesson, I'm gonna talk about proof rather than ABV, so alcohol by volume. Uh, proof is sort of like the double of ABV, so 125 uh, proof is 62.5 ABV alcohol by volume. So as I said, the average, uh, sort of the norm in industry is 125, and I'm going to dig into that, uh, why that is. And actually the legal maximum is also 125. And this changed back in the 60s, because in 62, a new law was passed, uh, where it actually went from 110, which was the maximum level back then, up to 125. But there is right now, I see a little bit of a trend to go uh, lower on the barrel entry proof. And I think once you watch this lesson, it will be crystal clear why that is. So why was the law changed in 1962 to go from 110 to 125? Well, basically it is to raise the profit or was to raise the profit for the manufacturers or the distillers. Um, and you'll see, I'm gonna do a little bit of a math here during this uh, lesson and you'll see exactly why it makes total sense from a manufacturer point of view to actually increase the uh, the proof level there. So that was the primary reason why they wanted to go from 110 to 125 back in 62. Um, if you Google this topic here, you'll also see a lot of people feels very dismayed about this decision back, made back in the 60s uh, because the higher barrel entry proof, uh, some claim uh, the less quality of whiskey it produces. And that, that is actually the topic of this specific lesson here. So in about 10 minutes, you will understand what this is all about. All right. So why is there a trend towards a lower barrel entry proof? So even though 125 is sort of norm out there, there are new manufacturers popping up all the time that sort of have understood why a lower barrel entry proof, as I promise I will tell you why, produces a more palatable or nicer whiskey that is easier to sip. So when people start to realizing that, of course it has economic consequences as you will see in just a few moments. Um, but once people understand the quality is becoming better with lower barrel entry proof, this is why some of the newer people on the market, um, newer distilleries, are sort of looking at a way to also differentiate themselves. So there's a trend towards um, lower barrel to proof because it simply makes better whiskey, most people think, and you, will, you, will, you can do your own judgment after this lesson. Okay, so why does a lower barrel entry proof actually produce uh, better whiskey? It's a really good question. It's sort of like the, the core question in this lesson. 
And I'm going to share you with you now um, a slide here that uh, will become very, very busy at the end here. So I hope you will hang in there because there's going to be a ton of numbers on this slide once we are finished with it. So I have uh, two scenarios here. So let's say I have a manufacturer. Um, I have, actually I have two manufacturers. They both want to make a six year old uh, whiskey and they want to make it 90 proof of 45% ABV in the bottles that they send to the consumers. And um, they have uh, two different approaches. So the first uh, manufacturer to, to the far right has decided to go for 125 barrel inter proof. So the proof of the whiskey going to the barrels and the other one next to me has opted for a hundred, right? So depending on, and this is not exact science, depending on the proof level uh, after this distillation process, in this example, I've just gone for 140, uh, which seems to be sort of like the average. Some people go a little bit lower, actually some also go a little bit higher. And by the way, the maximum uh, you can go by law is 160, but I don't think a lot of people go all that way. So let's say about 140 proof. So they made the whiskey and it's now 140 proof and it needs to go into the barrel. And a barrel, of course, uh, as you may have heard in one of the previous lessons here, is about 53 gallons or 200 liters. Um, so if you want to take the whiskey down from 140 proof to 125, 110 proof, you obviously need to add water. And the, in the example of uh, the 125, you will need to add 5.7 gallons of water to take it down from the 140 to 125. And of course, if you want to go as low as 100 proof, of course, you need more water. Uh, in this example, you actually need a little bit uh, more than 15 uh, gallons of water that you need to add to the whiskey before it goes into the barrels to get that down to 100 proof. Okay, with me so far? Perfect. So as I will explain in a future uh, lesson, uh, the in, in certain circumstances, and especially in Kentucky, um, the proof level will actually go up with time. And I will explain that by why that is, because that's a little bit counterintuitive. You would think with alcohol evaporation, so the proof will go down, but actually it does increase in most cases. So the prediction here is that, so fast forward six years, uh, the whiskey is still in the barrel, and uh, the one that put it in at 125 proofs, it's probably got, got, uh, gone up 10 proof points. So it's at 135 at this point. And of course, the one that went in at 100 proof, it's probably up at 110 um, at, at this point after six years. And as I will also tell you in a, one of the next lessons here, um, there will be natural evaporation, of course, over time. Uh, so that 53 gallons or after six years will probably have gone down to about 44 gallons. That, that's sort of an estimate right there. Okay. So uh, if you are now down to 44 uh, gallons in the barrel, and remember, we decided we want to make a 90 proof whiskey, right? So at this point, the one to the far left, they're actually having 135 proof whiskey in the barrel and they wanna go all the way down to 90. So that's a lot of water that they need to dilute the whiskey with. Actually, as you can see here, it's 22 um, uh, gallons of water that they need to add to get down to the 90 proof level. Of course, the one next to me here uh, that started 100 is now 110. They will need a little less water to proof it down to 90, specifically here, actually 9.8 um, uh, gallons of water. So if you add the total water that was added in the entire process, obviously to the far left, you need to add 5.7 and 22. That makes 27.7, right? And it's the same next to me. It's a 15.1 plus the 9.8. And as you can see here, the result is for the entire process here, the amount of gallons of water that you needed to add in these two scenarios is 27.7 and 24.9. So a difference there, right? So let's analyze this uh, quite busy slide here from sort of like a, an economic perspective and also from a quality perspective. All right, let's do the profit analysis here. Okay, so uh, if the entry proof was really 125, which is sort of uh, the maximum allowed level here, you need to add 2.8 extra gallons of water to get the whiskey that you want, right? And as you can see here, of course, water is almost 
cost nothing. So it's much, much, much cheaper to add water instead of using whiskey, right? So, so that actually makes sense from an economic perspective. And if you actually, if you quantify it, those 2.8 gallons, so this is per barrel, right? That actually gives almost for free the manufacturer 14 extra bottles of like 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 750 mil, uh, milliliter uh, bottles here. So so they, they actually get almost for free because water is almost free, 14 extra bottles per barrel. So this is like money in the bank, right? So it makes total sense that they will go for 125 instead of 100 or 110 that like it was one day, right? But of course, if you analyze this sort of like from a quality perspective, so people have figured out um, and I'm not going to go into all the details what's happening in the wood. Maybe I'm going to do that in a future lesson. Let's see here. So it turns out that the lower proof whiskey, um, is, it's, it's a little bit easier for that whiskey to di dissolve all the wood sugars. And as you may remember from the previous lesson, the wood sugars is where you find almost all the taste in the whiskey, the really nice taste and the compounds like vanilla and, and, and all that. So a lower proof seems to just have a better way to get the whiskey to mingle all this good stuff here. So that's a, that's a good thing from a quality perspective. And also um, it turns out that that water which there'll be more of, of course, if you go for a lower barrel interproof, seems to be better at dissolving these phenol uh, phenolic uh, compounds, especially like the tannins. Uh, tannins are sort of like um, th these oaky, you, you probably know it from red wine, etc. It's something that is tastes a little bit better, bitter. It, sounds, uh, it, it tastes like oaky. It, it's typically not something that you are going actively for. So if you want a more mellow and easy to drink uh, bourbon, you want to get uh, rid of the tannins. And, and it seems like water is really, really good at dissolving uh, these tannins here. So that's another good thing here. And actually, uh, if you think about it, so adding more water in the beginning, actually means that a lot of, uh, more of the content of the whiskey has actually been aged, right? And you think, what do I actually mean about this third thing here? So just want to give you an example. So look at these two products here. They are almost identical in, of course, the amount of whiskey, the 750 milliliters, and the proof level is about 1994 on these, actually 92, 94 on these uh, products here. And they are sort of aged around the same time, right? The one uh, to the far uh, left here is from Mictors, and that goes in at 103 proof. That's what they have opted for. And the one next to me from Heaven Hill, Elijah Crate, Great, they're both great products. Uh, that goes in 125, the maximum allowable from, from, from law, right? So, but if you do the math, and I'm not gonna go into the details on the math here because you will fall asleep or you, your eyes will roll over, something like this. Actually, if you look at the content of this whiskey, the mixtures bottle right there, 83% of the whiskey or the content in that bottle has actually been in the wood because they only added 17% water after the maturation until they watered it down to the level that they want in, in, in the whiskey barrel, or in the whiskey bottle, right? But if you look at this uh, Elijah Craig here, it's actually only 70%. So 30% water they had to add from what we talked about previously uh, to get it down to the proof level 94, in this case, what they really wanted to. So you see, it's sort of like, more of the whiskey that you drink has actually been aged here. So that's also one of the reasons why it's sort of from a quality perspective, this makes sense, right? Okay. So here I have a couple of examples from manufacturers, um, what they do for barrel interproof. Um, some of the big ones may be not surprising because obviously they're using their publicly traded companies or they're looking to maximize effort uh, profits here. So Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, um, Heaven Hill, they all go to the maximum of the law 125, where some of the newer people on, on the market, like uh, for instance, Wilderness Trail, they go all the way down to 100, sometimes 105, so that's quite low. And Mictures, one of my favorite manufacturers, and the one that I'm sipping on today, of course, is 100 103 because they really believe in this 
low enter proof there. But you can see there are other examples here. Um, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to figure out exactly what barrel enter proof level that they use the manufacturers because it's not something that they are very public about. Uh, some are and some are definitely not. It tends to be the one with the lower enter proof. They tend to, you know, tell you that they're going this way for obvious reasons and the people going all the way to the maximum 125, they tend to um, sort of keep it as a secret uh, because, yeah, for obvious reasons, right? Okay. So um, does that mean that 125 barrel intraproof proof does not produce good products? Well, I have two balls here on, on the screen here. Uh, one is the Knob Creek uh, nine-year-old bourbon and the other one is actually Elijah Creek that I just showed before. These are fantastic products. They're great products, especially Knob Creek is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, they actually both are going in at 125 proof. And the reason why they can still make good whiskey with 125 proof is because there's so many other variables that sort of influences whether the whiskey is good or not good. It's, uh, you know, the ingredients that they use, all their years of experience, the quality of the wood, uh, the placement on the, on the warehouses, all of these things so sort of influence uh, the quality here. And they, as you can see here, they, they, they make fantastic products here. Of course, it would be super interesting to figure out, for instance, what would a Knob Creek that would gone in at 110 barrel inch proof, or maybe even 100 barrel inch proof compared to 125 actually taste like? It would, I'm, I'm willing to bet it would be better. So it would be interesting to see what they can do in this extent, right? But I mean, you can great, get great products. Don't get me wrong at this point. Yeah. So that was about it. Uh, so we come to the end here. So relatively easy topic here, but uh, something I find very, very fascinating. And um, basically, as you can see here, a lot of people think that lower bar barrel entry proof produces better whiskey. I think there is a trend in the industry towards going lower uh, barrel entry proof. And, and let's see how that will happen in the future, even with some of the uh, bigger manufacturers. So sorry for the math here and the calculations. I hope you enjoy this lesson and um, cheers. <laughs>